The second part of the legislative program that I will introduce will be truly an investment in South Dakota's future. It will be for long-term investments. It will be for building the infrastructure. I said earlier that too often politicians are attracted to short-term programs so that by the next election they might be able to point back and look at benefits or look at results. The courageous politicians are people who are willing to look at the long term and make a long term investment in what we believe is right. We need an automated networking system for libraries. We need a superior, more money in the Superior Scholar Program. We need to increase our National Merit Scholar uh, uh, programs and valedictorian programs for our best and brightest kids that are graduating from our secondary schools to go to school in South Dakota. We had 55 national semi-finalists in uh, national merit scholar finalists in this state last year. We had 49 finalists. I think we had six that stayed in the state of South Dakota. And the result of that is, uh, and the reason for that in many instances is because other states can outbid us again in what we are able to do to keep those brightest and best here. Those are the 18 to 35 year olds that I told you are leaving those 62 percent of the counties that, uh, that uh, makes our demographic statistics very startling. We need money for vocational education and making sure that it is flexible. We need money for tourism development. We need money to support the REACH program that has been developed. We need to be innovative after careful study to determine the level of support for innovative and dreamy ideas like the super collider, super conductor. I believe that those are things that we can no longer shrug off as being opportunities that South Dakota cannot take part in. The National Science Foundation, ladies and gentlemen, last year spent $1.7 billion a year in research money to higher education in this nation. 60% of that money goes to 10 states. South Dakota gets less than a million out of 1.7 billion, recognizing that research is the very basis for job development. The Congress and the National Science Foundation in 1980 created a program called EPSCOR. I don't remember what the acronym means, but it was called EPSCOR. And what they did is they wanted to take eight states that would qualify that have not qualified for National Science Foundation money in the past in an attempt to guide them toward how they might better make a commitment to research for economic development. They created this program of EBSCOR and South Dakota applied and a lot of good people work hard and we failed. And we failed because we did not get any of the National Science Foundation commitment because we have not made a basic commitment to economic development research in this state. In 1985, again recognizing that it was essential for rural development, that it was essential for those states whose economies are really hurting to broaden their economic base, they had EPSCOR too. And they made more money available to 11 more states. And again we applied, and again a lot of hard peop people, good people, worked very hard to qualify, people from our higher education institutions, and again we failed. And I sat at the exit briefing with the National Science Foundation people, and they were apologetic, and they said great strides had been made. Governor Janklow has come before this body and asked for special research money and special project money, and you've approved it. We have gone to the Appropriations Committee and asked for a reallocation of certain amounts of our higher education budget toward research, and you've given approval, but it isn't enough. And what the exit committee has told us is that we had, do not have a basic commitment to graduate programs in, in the basic sciences, and we don't have a commitment to research as a tool in economic development that we need to. We need to demonstrate our competitive, ladies and gentlemen. Strong evidence, there is strong evidence that scientific research spins off into job development. Examples of the wood processing plant recently in yeah, that was announced in Rapid City that was a product of research done at South Dakota School of Mines. Example is the de-icing patent that we, have, uh, that we have applied for. Example is the food processing ideas that are coming out 
of some of our college and, uh, and university campuses. And it is with those ideas that I ask that you be courageous, that you and I can be courageous in, in uh, creating a pool of money that uh, would be available for those kinds of ideas. I ask your approval, and we'll introduce legislation, to, ask, uh, to create a fund in the Office of State Development known as the Employer's Investment in South Dakota's Future. The funds that I intend to, that I'm asking you to use will be designed from the unemployment contribution mechanism that we already have in state law. Currently, employers in South Dakota, if I may indulge on you for a brief explanation, currently the employers in the state of South Dakota, myself, many of you, on a quarterly basis, we multiply our payroll by a certain percentage. We write a check and we send it to the South Dakota Department of Labor. And the South Dakota Department of Labor deposits it in a clearing account. And from that clearing account, there are some administrative expenses taken, but the trust fund for which unemployment funds, from which unemployment funds come, the trust fund is uh, actually kept in Washington and we ship these millions of dollars to Washington to be invested in United States Treasury bills. And that deposit in Washington constitutes South Dakota's trust fund for unemployment. The federal government invests it, and it makes up the trust fund. Today, we are overfunded in our trust fund. Why? Because we have had a good generation of money in the unemployment fund since the crisis that we met, that this body met in 1981 and 1982. Because we have had a good increase in light manufacturing job opportunities in this state. Because we have had a good increase in employment and services. And although the construction industry hasn't expanded as fast, we have had good uh, in increases in those kinds of uh, uh, job opportunities that pay into the unemployment fund. The federal guideline is that we need 150% in our trust fund to main a remain actuarially sound. We need 150% of what the highest payout we have ever had. The highest payout we have ever had is $19.5 million. 150% of that would be somewhere under $30 million. In 1986, we had $38 million in the South Dakota Unemployment Trust Fund. We needed to pay out in unemployment benefits $14 million. In 1987, our projection is that that fund will grow to $44 million. We will need 13.5. By 1989, we will have $55 million if we don't do anything differently, and we will need 14.3. The choices that we have in this legislative session are three. Number one, we can increase the benefits to those people who would derive benefit from the unemployment trust fund, those people who are unemployed through no fault of their own. Number two, we have a choice of decreasing the taxes or the contribution rate to the people who pay those, that is the business community in this state. Number three, we have an opportunity to utilize the excess in that fund for an investment in South Dakota's future. And I am going to propose in legislation that we can do all three. The legislation that I will introduce, number one, will increase, will ask that you increase the maximum weekly benefit from $129 that it is today to 140. It has not been raised for five years. It used to be raised on an automatic basis, uh, de depending on inflation and depending on the average weekly salary or pay that was developed in the state of South Dakota. And this body put a cap on it in 1982, I believe it was, at 129, and it has not been raised. It needs to be raised. We need to also, in, in this process, get a commitment from labor and the representatives of labor that they will not uh, then ask for another increase for perhaps five years as we continue to build the fund for South Dakota's future because it is truly the benefit of the uh, laboring uh, people from the business people in this state. Number two, I am going to go to the business community in this state and ask that they wait one year for a reduction in the contribution rate, which will give us an opportunity to use $4.7 billion, million, $4 million for the pool of funds as I talked about a minute ago. The, the salient features of it are, is that it does not touch the trust fund dollars. It does not touch the money that has been paid in already. It does not increase taxes. It does not go for support of state government it does recognize a real opportunity for South Dakota's business community uh, to help in a time of real need. 
and I ask for your support. We're behind, ladies and gentlemen. We're behind. In the unemployment area, the program that I just outlined, California has already done it. And so has the state of Washington, and so is South Carolina, and so is Delaware. California and Delaware are using it for job and economic development. And uh, the state of Washington and South Carolina are using it as part of their general fund dollars. Uh, our neighbors, some of our neighbors, like Idaho and Montana and some of our other neighbors, are looking at it. Neighbors are considering it, but I'm asking you to be innovative. Let's not be last again. Let me give you an example of what I mean when I say that we're behind. There were six years ago, six years ago there were ten states in this country that had centers for innovative development. The research that I, that I talked about a minute ago. Ten years ago, ten, six years ago there were ten states that were investing in that. Today there are 40 and South Dakota is not one of them. The research triangle that we read about centered around Duke University in North Carolina is 30 years old, but they are producing jobs out of that research triangle and we are behind. The state of Massachusetts 10 years ago recognized that they had one of the highest unemployment rates of any industrialized state in the nation and they set about a program around research in higher education to create jobs in that state and the results have been remarkable. Their personal incomes have gone up, their unemployments have gone down. Michigan realized the critical need in that state in competition with foreign automobile uh, manufacturers that they needed to get into the applied engineering business and they have done it and it has had a profound effect on their uh, on their uh, activities. Uh, the state of Tennessee and uh, the state of Arkansas has recognized also that education and the infrastructure development is important. We have two choices ladies and gentlemen as we stand here today we have two choices. We can sit here and for the next 40 days of this legislative session uh, engage in a discussion about how we are going to manage misery or our other choice is to be very proactive and innovative and aggressive on developing programs for South Dakota's future. I very much am looking forward to working with you on these programs, to listening to your ideas, to meeting with you every single opportunity that we have to make sure that we do address these and other critical choices that we are going to have to make for South Dakota's future. Thank you very much.